Welcome back to Why It's Great. Today we're tackling one of the greatest, most epic fantasy movies of all time. A movie filled with betrayal, love, action, heart, and most importantly, adventure. I'm of course talking about the Pirates of the Caribbean, the Curse of the Black Pearl. Hopefully I'm saying Caribbean correctly. If not, then I guess it's the gallows for me. However, if you're new to this series, as I haven't made one of these in a while, then the concept is quite simple. I watch a film and note down all the standout moments, scenes, or sequences, and then I give each of these moments either a bronze, silver, or gold medal. A bronze means that this is a memorable scene. It's really good. It stands out. A silver means that this scene is incredible, almost perfect. And a gold medal either means that it's a groundbreaking moment, character score, fight, or whatever. A truly iconic film moment. Or simply a moment that has had a significant emotional impact on me throughout my life. This is a series made to celebrate cinema and focus heavily on the positives of either great movies or movies that I think are underrated. Now obviously I don't want to give the impression that these movies are perfect because I don't think any film is perfect. Everything has flaws and the acknowledgement of those flaws are what sometimes makes something perfect. If not to everyone, then at least to us as individuals. So if you're a person who needs criticism in your reviews, then the section where I talk about the flaws or negative aspects of the film is at the end. Personally, I just like focusing on positivity first because I find it so much more fun than being negative. However, feel free to leave as many comments as you feel you need to down below. This series only works if you all leave your own opinions of these movies in the comments section so that we can have a good debate. Now, I just quickly wanted to mention the controversy surrounding Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. The trial, I think, left a bad taste in most people's mouths, especially since the outcome and the whole nature of it was very confusing and performative from both sides. And also because more and more evidence against Johnny Depp has been coming out ever since the trial. Now, whether Johnny Depp is guilty or innocent, or whether Amber Heard is guilty or innocent, or whether they're both very much at fault, doesn't really matter to this video. Like with J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter, it's sometimes important to be able to separate works of art from their creators, especially if that work of art isn't tainted by what makes the creator controversial or problematic. It's something we as humans do all the time. I just wanted to mention this because I will be speaking very positively about Johnny Depp as Jack Sparrow in this video, and although he was very influential to my childhood, it has nothing to do with current affairs. I just wanted to make that clear. I just want to remind you that if you enjoyed this video, then please remember to leave a like and a comment. This video has taken a long time to make, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd help me get it out to as many people as possible. Also, do check out my Patreon if you want to further support the channel. But enough rambling, here's why Pirates of the Caribbean The Curse of the Black Pearl is great. And right off the bat, this movie goes hard. The opening scene is really strong, so much so that I almost think it deserves a silver medal. Let me explain. The ambience and atmosphere it sets up is so intriguing. From the vibe alone, we can tell that this movie won't just be your typical Disney movie. It's mysterious, it's chilling, it's creepy but it's exciting in a way. It really spooked me as a child. In a good way, of course, because scaring children will always be a win. <laughs> but this scene doesn't just establish the tone of the movie, it also gives a lot of information that doesn't seem forced. It's the perfect amount of exposition that's handed to us through an interesting opening scene. It sets up the world, the fact that the British Royal Navy has rid the ocean of most pirates. But by Elizabeth seeing the Black Pearl, we're also told that there absolutely still are pirates. In a way, it establishes the status quo of the world. We see the Royal Navy as in control, they're high and mighty, they are proud and they have reason to be. However, the fact that there is a thick fog surrounding them adds a factor of there being a hidden threat. The suspense rises and although people like Norrington and Governor Swan are confident and nonchalant, characters like Gibbs warning Elizabeth of the dangers of singing pirate songs brings that level of fear and awareness that puts us on our toes and creates a level of suspense. And sure enough, the setup is rewarded by this burning ship and the ghostly image of a pirate ship sailing away. But further than the atmosphere, this scene also introduces this mystery surrounding Will, which is a very important story thread in the movie, as well as setting up Elizabeth's curiosity and fascination with pirates, which is also key to her character as well. Add the introduction of characters like Norrington, Gibbs, and Governor Swan, and I almost can't imagine an opening scene that better encapsulates the atmosphere and lore of a movie. Naturally, there's still the aspect of silliness and goofiness that's important to this movie, but will be introduced later, 
But for now, this scene shows us what we can expect from this movie, and I think it's a damn good opening scene. I don't usually go this in depth with a scene, but I just wanted to help everyone understand why this scene is a really good opener to a film. I'll try to keep my analysis of most of the scenes relatively short, but I just couldn't help myself. And maybe I'll get carried away later too. Oh well, I guess we'll see. Then, after that brilliant opening scene, we need to further establish these characters and where they are now, almost a decade later. And we are introduced to the awkwardness and greatness that is Will Turner. The silence as he breaks the lamp thingy is golden. Like, look at this little klutz. I wish he was my child. But we're also shown his sheer dedication towards his craft and his awkward interaction with Elizabeth not only sets up their love story, but it also makes a clear distinction between their two worlds. They simply have different roles and responsibilities. Elizabeth is born into nobility. She's a woman in a very male-dominated society, so her choices aren't really her own. And while her dad wants her to find stability and security in someone like Norrington, she longs for mystery and adventure, which leads more towards Will, who's a lowborn blacksmith with a mysterious past. They're from two different worlds, and this creates a Romeo and Juliet dynamic that from the beginning has us rooting for them. Orlando Bloom and Keira Knightley are also just two incredibly hot individuals, and it really should be illegal to slay this much. However, then we have our first gold moment. And what other than the introduction of one of the most iconic characters ever put to screen, Jack Sparrow. Now I've thought long and hard about this, and I don't think you could ever recast Jack Sparrow. He's one of the few characters in cinema that I think this is true for. Even with great and iconic performances such as Heath Ledger as the Joker, or Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, I could still see other actors playing these characters. I mean, many actors have already portrayed the Joker in different but almost equally interesting ways, and despite how much I love Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, I still think we could end up seeing different depictions of the character that would work well and that we would accept. However, with Jack Sparrow, I just don't think that's possible, because the character is so synonymous with Johnny Depp. And the question of whether this character should be recast is now more relevant than ever, but personally, I don't think it's possible. This character wasn't written, he was transformed by Johnny Depp himself. Everything from how the character looks, to how he acts, to how he talks, to his weird but iconic lines, everything about this character is just unrepeatable. Because no one could ever be Jack Sparrow except for Johnny Depp. And if someone tried to alter the character and make changes, then the whole essence of the character would change and he wouldn't be Jack Sparrow anymore. It's so hard to find a performance that has the same feeling of once in a lifetime as Jack Sparrow has. Now this is not to dick ride Johnny Depp or anything. It's not supposed to imply that there's anything wrong with the character being recast or receiving multiple incarnations. But what I am trying to say is that the character is so unique that I don't think there's anything like him. And without Jack Sparrow, the Pirates of the Caribbean wouldn't be nearly what it is today. It just wouldn't be the same. But to get back on track after spouting my love for Jack Sparrow, I think his introduction is simply perfect. The first time we see him, he's standing on top of his ship, looking badass, with his epic score in the background. He looks interesting and mysterious, but the illusion is quickly shattered as he jumps down into his boat that's slowly filling with water. The juxtaposition of the badassery with the sinking ship tells us everything we need to know about Jack Sparrow. And without speaking a word, we see him salute the hanged pirates as he's going straight into the lion's den himself, and then the music picks up again as he elegantly parks his boat in the dock. Now the music is something that we'll get back to later, but taking everything into account, I don't think I could possibly give this scene anything other than a gold medal. The character is simply perfect, and this was a perfect introduction. The whole Saving Elizabeth sequence is just great in my opinion, and by this I mean everything from Jack chatting with the two comic relief characters, to Jack saving Elizabeth, to the hostage situation, to Jack's escape. It's the first piece of action we get, and it's a scene that I've been debating giving a silver, but I don't really know. But let's first discuss the sequence. Now it starts with Jack interacting with Murtaugh and Mulroy. I did not know their names were Murtaugh and Mulroy until I looked it up, but that's amazing. I love that. But they're the two comic relief characters who will be recurring throughout the movies, which I really like. But this scene is just great. We see more of Jack's charisma and weird ways of getting what he wants. We also have Norrington's coronation where he proposes to Elizabeth who then does the only acceptable thing when a man you don't like asks you out on a date, you fall down a fucking cliff. Honestly, queen behavior. However, once she's in the water, her medallion- oh yeah, by the way, she stole Will's medallion from him at the beginning, which was the only thing his dead father left him, 
So yeah, dick move Elizabeth. But the medallion starts calling out to something. And throughout this whole next scene, a secret tension is building up in the background. As the skies grow darker and the weather gets more extreme. However, then we get our first look into Jack's intriguing morality when he dives in to save Elizabeth, knowing full well he could easily steal this ship from Murtaugh and Mulroy, rather than jumping in to save someone in need. Perhaps there's more to pirates than meets the eye. But then right after that, he takes her hostage. Don't worry people, Elizabeth gets the hoodwink back on Jack and all the other soy boys in the later movies. But Jack and Norrington say their iconic lines. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. This is the day that you almost caught. Captain Jack. And Jack makes his epic escape, with the score once again showing us why it's one of the most iconic scores of all time. Once again, this film is just so good at making intriguing, exciting, and fun sequences that have a lot of story and meaning poured into them. I'm really on the cusp of giving this scene a silver medal, but I think I'll stay a bit conservative with my medals because right after this we have a true silver moment. Jack versus Will. This fight is one of my favorite fights in any film ever, so actually, scrap that silver medal. This scene is a certified gold moment. Fights get grander than this, but I don't think they get much better, at least for me. Part of my judgment for whether or not a moment earns a gold medal depends on what the moment means to me, not necessarily because it's a groundbreaking scene, and this fight absolutely fits the former because it instantly comes to mind when I think about movie fight scenes. It was iconic during my childhood, but as I've gotten older I've learned to appreciate it on a whole different level. The choreography and use of environment are both amazing. Technically, this is a very impressive fight. However, it's the interplay between Jack and Will that makes it so great. Will is technically more skilled at sword fighting than Jack is. However, Jack has experience. He uses the environment to his advantage, and he's realistic compared to Will who almost lives in a fantasy at this point. Will is naive, he doesn't know how the world really works yet. He thinks everyone is either good or bad, and that everyone plays by the rules and has strict morals. He doesn't take into account that a pirate likely isn't going to fight fairly. And he gets punished for it. Will doesn't yet comprehend that people can be grey, that they can be complicated, but oh boy does he learn this throughout the course of this movie. However, it's not just a good scene for Will, but also for Jack, because it further studies his morality. He doesn't mind playing dirty and using cheap tricks to get what he wants, but he's not an evil person necessarily. He doesn't kill Will when he could literally escape if he did so. It wouldn't taint his image and he'd have a chance of getting away, but he doesn't do it. Now whether or not that decision is due to him not being a bad person, or whether he's just a little bit insane and doesn't realize that he could literally just use a different bullet to kill Barbosa, and nothing would change. I guess Jack's just a bit sentimental, but the complexity of his character, and the fact that we can never really figure him out, adds to why he's such a beloved character. This fight is a silver moment in terms of its quality, but it's a gold moment for how legendary it is. Now right after this intimate fight, we get straight into some more action, and I must say these movies really know how to put together an action set piece. What I really love about them is that there are always multiple interesting storylines going on at once that keep us engaged in the overall battle. Firstly, there's the payoff to the rising tension that started once Elizabeth fell in the water, and rewards us with an interesting larger scale battle outside with Will and the Royal Guards, to Elizabeth inside her home running away from and fighting off Mary and Pippin, to Jack just being stuck in a cage. That last part might sound like a joke, but no, Jack is such a fun character that him just being stuck in a jail cell is still entertaining. Great scene once again. Then we have the iconic ship stealing scene, and this is just... This scene really portrays the silliness of these movies in the best way possible. Everything from them walking on the bottom of the ocean with a boat for air, which by the way I thought for an embarrassingly long time that that was actually possible, to that one dude swinging towards the ship with absolutely no hope of making it. Bless that man. At least he tried. But again, the chemistry between Jack and Will is just so good. I love Will trying to be badass, but everyone, even Jack, thinking he's a bit cringe, which sets up his arc later, when he actually accepts who he is and becomes a real pirate. And also love seeing that Jack is actually a pretty decent pirate, who always ends up playing to his strength of constantly being looked upon as a fraud, which Norrington has to reluctantly agree with. It's just a fun scene that encapsulates what Pirates of the Caribbean is all about. However, I think this is the perfect moment to talk about the score. 
which absolutely deserves a gold moment. This score is not just one of the most iconic scores in film history that mostly everyone can recognize if they have any self-respect. Sorry, Grandpa. However, this score also just adds to every single scene and makes it better, which is a testament to a truly great movie score. It elevates the writing to a place that neither could get to on their own, and I think that's fantastic. The music in this movie gains a gold medal for its quality and its iconic status. However, then we have this little cute scene of Jack teaching Will a lesson by dangling him off the side of his ship. I just love this mentor-student dynamic. This is an important moment for Will in his much-needed journey of breaking off from his fantasy ideal. In this film, he goes from the spitting image of a fairy tale prince who will eventually get the princess, to a hardened man who accepts his pirate lineage, who accepts the moral greatness of the world, and through finding himself, he breaks that fantasy he was living in before. And it's also just a fun scene. God, I freaking love this movie. There are just so many layers to it, even if I'm the only one seeing those layers. But honestly, no scene so far has been lackluster. The Tortuga scene is also just a fun scene. I love the vibe of this place, and I'll likely talk more about it when I make a video on the sequels. But for now, it's fun. But moving on, I didn't mention the first meeting with Barbosa because I feel like this is the real introduction to him and his crew. I think Barbosa is a great villain. He's like the perfect caricature of a pirate. He looks the part, he acts the part, he speaks the part. Jeffrey Rush does a fantastic job portraying Barbosa in all of these movies. However, it's not just the aesthetic of Barbosa that's great, his motivations are strangely understandable. Like imagine not feeling anything at all. You're constantly hungry but can't satisfy this hunger. You're thirsty but you can't clench your thirst. You feel no warmth or cold at all, it's just empty. He probably needs to take a shit desperately, but he can't. And to top it all off, he can't even end his own misery. None of these cursed pirates can. I think that's such an interesting concept and it works really well to humanize these otherwise brutal, sadistic, and ghoulish pirates. I also love how it breaks the pirate stereotype of a poisoned apple. No, he doesn't want to kill Elizabeth, he just wants her to understand his pain. Probably also gets a little kick out of seeing her being all gluttonous. But hey, I'm not judging. <laughs> However, one of the best things about the Pirates of the Caribbean movies are the betrayals. I mean, they get crazy in the sequels, but this one has it too. And this first scene in the cave is just the beginning. I love seeing Jack being the little conniving, scheming leprechaun that we know he is. At the end of the day, despite him having some sense of morality, he still always puts himself first before others. And in this moment, he's ready to sacrifice Will. Or is he? You really never know with Jack. Is the reason that he works together with Will at the end and saves the day because it just aligned like that and it ended up being the best course of action for him? Or did he plan it from the beginning and actually does care about Will? I don't know. If you think you know the answer, then let me know down below. However, in this moment, he's ready to trade Will for the Black Pearl. But Will has learned from his mistakes. Jack taught him a bit about the reality of the world and how everyone is always trying to save themselves. So he gets one over Jack, he knocks him out, and then he saves Elizabeth and leaves Jack behind as the Black Pearl makes it its escape. But then Jack, being the opportunist that he is, strikes a deal with Barbosa. Honestly, this man is so convincing, I'd probably sell him my kidneys if he made a good enough argument. But then we have this intimate moment with Will and Elizabeth, where it not just builds their relationship, but also adds tension. They clearly have feelings for each other, but both of them have only just had a taste of the real world, and they're still confused, they're probably scared, and they're on edge. It's a natural time to have a bit of a conflict, and it just works really well, especially because their chemistry is so damn good. However, then we have our first proper ship battle, and it's simply so entertaining. I'll talk more about the ship battles in future videos because the sequels step these up tremendously in my opinion, but this one is still very good. Like always, we have the different perspectives that keep us engaged. We have the main battle that starts out as a chase scene and then becomes a cannonball slugfest, and then finally they board the ship and have a sword fight. Now in this battle, we see both Will and Elizabeth begin to step up and show signs of being those future commanders that we know they become. So we have that main battle between Barbosa's forces and Elizabeth and company, but then we also have Will looking for the medallion as the ship fills with water, and of course we have Jack being, well, Jack. These battles aren't just extravagant for the sake of being extravagant, they're very well made, don't get me wrong, 
but they're also well written. The different perspectives and seeing the different goals and motivations of each major player is so engaging and it makes it so that these large scale battles never lose their charm and the story. Brilliant stuff. Now the island scene is also iconic and I think it's time to talk about Elizabeth. Now Elizabeth was the original girl boss, in my life at least. There have been girl bosses before and there will continue to be girl bosses way after and they will continue slaying until the end of time. Jokes aside, in all honesty, Elizabeth's character arc throughout this trilogy is so good. She's unironically one of my favorite characters in all of cinema. She starts out naive and gullible, but also curious and longing for mystery. As a woman, she's held back by the shackles of the society she lives in. She's expected to be one thing while she yearns for something else. Now, her dreams don't end up matching perfectly with the real world. She gets betrayed and she gets mistreated. However, by the end, she becomes free. She breaks free from the chains keeping her down and she becomes a badass. But even from the beginning, we see that she's resourceful. She's not afraid to get her hands dirty and do what has to be done. She's crafty and she knows how to use her weaknesses and strengths to her advantage and she knows how to exploit the men of this world because most of them are very predictable and want the same thing. Elizabeth is great in these movies from start to finish but I think the island scene is where her character truly gets going as she manipulates Jack and shows her resourcefulness. It took one of the greatest pirates pure luck to escape that island while Elizabeth planned it out in like 12 hours. She's absolutely a top tier character however I'll refrain from giving her a medal just yet because just like Will, they develop so much over the course of these films that I feel like it would be a disservice to rank them just yet. However, this scene also just has one of the most iconic lines ever that became a classic meme. However, I'm not going to rank these movies based on memes because if I did so, then the Star Wars prequels would be the best movies of all time. So I'll try to keep the memes in check. But this sequence is also really good for Jack's character. Him admitting that his stories aren't as great as they sound is a big moment for him. He cares a lot about his reputation and he cares what people think about him. We've seen that multiple times throughout this movie. Most people don't really believe him and think he's a bit of a liar, but they can never be fully sure because he always makes you doubt whether or not he's actually telling the truth. However, in this moment, he has to actually tell someone that he's a fraud and it's a big moment for him. However, Elizabeth eventually gets them off the island and then Jack goes back to being a sly fox, once again showing how good he is at playing people like fools is because he knows how to play the fool himself, but he plays it like a king. I just really like these scenes. However, now it's time for the final battle, and this is a silver moment. Now, yet again, this battle is split into three. First up, we have the undead pirates versus the Royal Navy, which is an interplay between the pirates' sneak attack and Governor Swan hiding in his room, only to come out once the fighting has stopped. What a legend. But we also have Elizabeth being a badass once again, tricking these two idiots, freeing the crew, and then going to help Will and Jack alone after the crew didn't want any of that. And then of course we have the scene inside the cave, which is what gives this battle its silver medal. We see the culmination of Jack scheming as he bamboozles Barbosa and works together with Will and Elizabeth to end the curse and kill Barbosa. Now Jack's fight with Barbosa is phenomenal. I love it. They both have so much charisma, but they also have a lot of history and bad blood. But it's also just weird because they're both undead at this point, so what are they even fighting for? And the whole time the music is just blaring in the background, so we don't care. I mean, anything with this theme in the background will be a win in my books. But Barbosa's death is what really gets me in the scene, because it's both satisfying, but also quite sad. This man who has been longing to be able to feel just something again finally gets that chance, but all he feels is coldness as he dies. It's a bit sad. Yeah, sure, he was a terrible person and did terrible things, but the humanity in us can still make us feel a little bit of sympathy for him. I just think this was an almost perfectly crafted final battle, but why don't I give it a gold medal you might ask? Well that's because an even better scene is coming up. Yes, I think the final scene of this movie is a gold moment. I just think it's a perfect ending to a movie. It wraps up all the conflicts and the little character relationships so wonderfully. Everything from Jack about to be hanged, getting upset that they didn't call him captain, to Elizabeth pretending to faint to allow Will the cover he needs to save Jack, to Jack and Will teaming up and Will doing a freaking backflip, to Jack falling off the ledge, to Elizabeth and Will finally getting together, to Norrington showing men out there how to get rejected like a man. Seriously, what a guy he is. To the Black Pearl suddenly appearing and Jack looking off into the distance while he delivers a line that was so iconic that a screamo band name themselves after it. It's an ending that gets me so hyped every single time, and I always feel like getting straight into the next one because I love this world and these characters and these stories. And when an ending leaves you not only wanting more, but craving more, then that is in my opinion worthy of a gold medal. And there we have it. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. What a film. 
Truly, I can't fathom how good this movie is. This is a film that I adored as a child. I dreamt of being in the world and going on adventures with Jack, Will, and Elizabeth, and of course Murtaugh and Mulroy, but growing up I thought that this movie was like most of the other blockbuster action movies that I thought were cool, but that the common consensus was that they're really not the best movies, such as Spider-Man 3 and King Kong. However, getting older, I've been realizing more and more that Curse of the Black Pearl is a really fucking solid movie. That doesn't just have epic battle sequences, a good score, and an interesting mythology, but that it's also a really well-written film. That cares about the viewer and wants to reward them for paying attention. The characters are top-notch, they're really interesting, each with their own motivations and reasons for acting like they do. We also see some really good character arcs, predominantly for Will, Elizabeth, and Jack, too. Arcs that follow through into the next movies. The dialogue is also just really good. There aren't any cringy or wasteful moments, most of the dialogue has a purpose either to further the story, the characters, or for comedic effect. And that's another aspect of this film that makes it so good. It's really funny. Now of course the character of Jack Sparrow is just funny in nature, but all the other moments of comedy still hold up and make me chuckle even 19 years later. However, despite the lighthearted and funny moments, this film still knows how to take itself seriously. And that, along with all the other reasons that I've listed and more, is why this movie succeeds because it has heart. Now obviously this movie isn't perfect. No film is. And that's not the message I want these videos to have. Why It's Great is meant to celebrate movies and focus a little bit more on the positive aspects of film rather than the negative aspects. It's a response to modern film discourse which can often get really heated and even hateful at times. That's why I choose to focus on the positive aspects of these movies before delving into some of the potential criticisms. However, that doesn't mean that this is how film criticism should be done. Not at all. This is my little thing. The way I like critiquing movies. Positivity first, and then negativity, but always keeping the negativity positive, if that makes sense. I think acknowledging the flaws of pieces of art is incredibly important, and everyone should have the freedom to say so if they hate something, or if they love it. I'm expecting you all to critique this movie in your own way down below. That's the beauty of the internet. We can all share our opinions with each other. But yeah, don't take this video as if I'm saying that the film is perfect. It's not. You can not like it, and you can definitely point out its flaws, which is something I'll do now. Now obviously, with most movies, you can nitpick this film. There are tiny mistakes such as the dude screaming out in pain when we know he doesn't feel it, but even these things can be explained if you really want to. Like even if you can't die or feel pain, your body memory probably still reacts to you getting stabbed. It might just be a reaction. Or it's like when a gamer gets hurt in game but still says ow. And even if it is a mistake, then who cares? I don't like nitpicks. I think it can be fun to find mistakes such as the cowboy hat in the background, but using these small nitpicks to criticize a film is just so weird to me. Unless the movie is literally filled with mistakes, and it takes away from the enjoyment of the film, in that case, yeah, it's fine. But if not, then pointing it out can easily come off as pretentious. Now the visuals overall look fantastic. Everything from the massive ship battles, to the practical effects, to the scenery, I think this movie holds up very well. But naturally some of the CGI is a bit outdated. And I guess that if you only like watching newer movies, then you'd be annoyed at this. But I'm being really charitable here, cause this just doesn't matter. The CGI looking outdated makes perfect sense since the movie came out in 2003, and any problems there are in the visual effects, the sequels absolutely make up for. Now one thing that this film relies on is the comedic factor and its silliness. Without this, I don't think the film would capture us in the same way that it does. I think the drama and overall story would suffer quite a lot, because it is a silly and over-exaggerated story, and weird things happen. So if you get the feeling that they're taking themselves too seriously, then I guess it could end up being a long watch. I'm saying this because not everyone will find it funny. I think it would be hard for anyone not to chuckle at Jack, but some of the jokes do feel like MCU type quirks, which is extremely uncharitable by me because this movie came out way before the MCU existed. I don't think the MCU could even exist without legendary movies like Pirates of the Caribbean. However, if it's your first time watching this film and you've grown tired of this style of comedy where a joke is said and then all the characters stop to stare at them weirdly, then and yeah, maybe you'll find this film a bit boring, because taking away the silliness of the movie takes away some of its charm. I completely understand if some people think that this film drags along and has bad pacing, but personally I'm invested all the way through. I think it's absolutely a testament to this film's greatness that I had to really try to find any negatives to talk about. You probably can, which is why you should let me know down below. But personally I have a hard time getting over probably a mixture of nostalgia, 
and just complete admiration for this film. But yes, please do leave some of your criticisms down below to spice up the discussion. However, overall, this isn't just a movie that succeeds due to a stellar soundtrack, a big budget, a really fun concept, and great performances. The writing is also just top notch. It's a decently long film, but it doesn't feel like it, because between the epic fight scenes and the intimate character moments, to the humor and betrayal, we're constantly kept on our toes. I feel like they don't make films like this anymore. Don't get me wrong, the film industry is still very much alive and so many fantastic movies come out every year. Cinema is booming, but I'm more talking about the big blockbuster movies because obviously when there's so much money involved, there's more incentive to stick to what earns that money back rather than truly being creative and risking it flopping. Maybe it's just my bias for this film, but I truly think that this movie, along with its two first sequels, are a one-of-a-kind sort of thing. I love these movies to death, and I can't wait to review Dead Man's Chest and At World's End. However, to stay on track, this has been why Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, is great. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoy it. It feels really good to return to this series. I didn't realize how much I'd missed it. However, this video did take a lot of time and effort to make, so I would really appreciate it if you'd leave a like and a comment because it really helps me out. And also, if you'd like to support me further and get a couple benefits, then the link to my Patreon is down in the description. I'd also like to thank my patrons, which are on screen right now, and it includes our turf captain, Ben Joseph. Thank you guys so much as always, but I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay safe and peace out.